I have made a mistake, and I would like to apologize. On December 15th, 2019, two weeks before the first cases of COVID-19 were identified, two weeks before the world began to fall apart, I made a catastrophic mistake. Preaching on Gaudete Sunday, I may or may not have suggested, even guaranteed, that 2020 would be the greatest year on record. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. The Irish in me should have sounded the superstition alarms. You never guarantee anything like that. You're just asking for trouble. For some reason though, I just said it. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to say. There's a good chance that the entire pandemic is actually my fault. Now, obviously I'm joking, right? I do not think that I actually jinx the world with my homily, nor do I think that God would punish us so greatly because of the hubris of one man. That's not the way God works. But there is something I would like to walk back, an idea that was at the root of that homily that was pretty misguided if not dangerous. As you probably know, Gaudete Sunday is a moment of joy in the middle of a penitential season. The readings in the final few weeks of ordinary time use apocalyptic images telling of the destruction of the world, then we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, and then pick up with the apocalypse imagery again in the first two weeks of Advent. There is hope in the readings, of course, but in the sense of, this world is horrible, but don't worry, there's another one coming. Overall, not too uplifting. Gaudete Sunday, however, is a break from that. It's a moment of jubilation to remind ourselves that Jesus has already come, that we already possess a portion of the future we await. It's a moment to find the good in the here and now, to remind ourselves that things aren't all that bad. In fact, because God is in control, things are actually far more good than bad. We just have to know where to look. And so that was the direction I took with my homily. I acknowledge that it is often easy to see the ways in which our world appears to be going to hell in a handbasket, but invited the congregation to look a little deeper, to take a longer view. Notice the things that we often take for granted. I listed a number of statistics about the decreasing mortality rate of children worldwide, the near eradication of extreme poverty, declines in violent crimes, increase in flushable toilets, widespread internet access, declining rates of abortion, and so on. Despite the doom and gloom of cable news, if we looked at humanity as a whole, the sum total of all that we were doing took an average of the entire world, not just our personal experiences, we could very easily say that 2019 had been the best year in human history. Not because there were any particular moments in 2019 that were great in itself, that it was a spike of overwhelming joy, but that there was a line of progress that humanity was forging. Slowly but surely, technological advances were making the world better, ever so slightly, year after year. Which is why you can see what I'm saying, and please don't blame me, 2020 should have been the best year on record. Every year just keeps getting better and better, so be optimistic, I told them. Don't focus on the bad things. The advancements we're making far outweigh any bad that could happen. I know, I know, I already said it, I'm sorry. I should know better than to jinx the entire world. Now, obviously this didn't pan out, and what we've seen worldwide has been anything but progress. COVID-19 has not only caused sickness and death unseen for 100 years, its effect on the economy has set the world back decades. Mental health issues have soared, particularly among children. Domestic violence has increased. Tens of millions of people were thrown back into extreme poverty, and so on. 2020 was by no means the best year on record. It did not continue on the line of progress that I expected, that we all expected, rather reminding us that progress is almost never linear. There are always setbacks, always regressions to the mean, always fluctuations. But it's much more than that. What I've come to realize in the past few months is that the very idea of progress itself is flawed. The idea that the world was better off in 2019 than 2018, better in 2018 than 1950, better in 1950 than 950, that we are always better off than our past and that the future will hold, generally speaking, nothing but improvement is a lie. The idea that we are always getting better, that we as a people have progressed beyond the achievement of our ancestors, that they were more primitive and ignorant than us, is a logical fallacy of the Enlightenment. It's a story we tell ourselves to feel better, but it's just not true. Ask yourself, is the art today the paintings and sculptures produced by creative minds, is it better than any time in human history? 
My guess is that Michelangelo, Caravaggio, and Da Vinci might disagree. What about literature? Are the best poems and stories of all time being written today, progressing well beyond our unenlightened ancestors? Shakespeare, Homer, and Dostoevsky would like a word if you actually think that. Maybe a little closer to home, think about our own relationships and the way we communicate with one another. Technology has definitely made it easier to be connected in a sense, but are we going to sit here and say that we, as a people today, are better conversationalists than people were a hundred years ago? Are we better listeners, more emotionally mature, more attentive to the person in front of us than people were before social media? I don't think so. What about faith, moral living? How do our values today compare to the values of our grandparents? It's obviously something that's impossible to quantify and is constantly adapting, so I don't mean to suggest that it can be definitively answered one way or another, but that's sort of the point. There are ways that we might have progressed, but certainly ways and things that really matter that we are far worse off than in previous times. And that is something we don't like to admit. As children of the Enlightenment, we want to believe that we are a more sophisticated people, that history is one of constant progress, that we are nothing like the ignorant poor people that lived a thousand years ago. We tell ourselves that this year will be the best in human history and that we are the cause, that we are in control. It's a mindset that Pope Francis criticizes a lot, particularly in Laudato Si. We live by a technocratic paradigm, as he calls it, the belief that technology and science, that our own will and ingenuity is the model and guide for all progress, that every problem can be solved with technological improvements, that human happiness is defined by scientific advancements. We seek to master our world, to control the created universe, and this makes human life better. This is the mark of progress. But what about art? What about ethics? What about relationships and faith and philosophy? Technocracy cares little of these things. Progress is measured only in terms of what science and technology can affect. Over the past eight years, Pope Francis has reminded us many, many times that progress means much more than this. In almost every one of his letters, he is calling us to recognize that there is truth and beauty in things that cannot be measured, that are usually thrown away by the larger society. The poor, the environment, indigenous people, the elderly. In our pursuit of progress, in our desire to master the world and control every inch of it, we have overlooked the genius that had existed long before we came along. In many ways, we might say that progress takes away what forever took to find. So did I cause the pandemic with my homily? Not in any direct sense, no. I do not want to leave you thinking that I believe in jinxes or that God is punishing us for having this mindset. This is not the point of this video. But I do think that there is something here worth addressing. There is definitely a connection between the mindset of my preaching two years ago and the consequences that follow. As of yet, we do not definitively know how COVID-19 came into existence and we may never know. But we do know that diseases like it, diseases like malaria, Lyme disease, Ebola, SARS, were all created and spread in part because of human action destroying natural environments for mining and development, bringing wild species into closer contact with humans, mixing populations, accelerating extinctions, increased leisure travel. All of these things mark a distinct mastery of humans over the world, but also betray our lack of mastery, directly contributing to the creation of new diseases like COVID-19. We may not have caused the pandemic personally or directly, but we do have an effect on our world. Our actions, our approaches to the world around us do make a difference. If we assume that progress is being made, if we assume that we're on the right path, we might fail to notice when things aren't going well and we're to blame. With God at the helm, we know that progress is happening, that the kingdom of God is in breaking and at hand. We might just need to recalibrate from time to time to make sure that what we're working for is what God's working for.